News 3 WSIL. Here's what's happening right now. Illinois will have a new minimum wage soon. We'll tell you what it's going to be. Plus, we have a warning from police about New Year's weekend. And we'll have more on how Buffalo, New York is doing after their winter weather. Stay with us. News 3 at 10 starts right now. We've got you covered from WSIL. This is News 3 at 10. Good evening, I'm Julie Williams, and we'll start tonight with a check of our weather here with Storm Track 3 meteorologist JC Brian. JC, it's windy out there, but it is so much warmer than it could be. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot better than the last couple of it days. Is. So a much needed change across the region. High temperatures finally climbed back up above average today. The average high for uh, Garbondale is 43 degrees and we climbed up into the low 50s. Some of us even into the mid 50s today. Paducah at 56. Union City topped out at 57. So again, really not a bad day, not a bad evening either. We've got quiet conditions across the region with more pretty warm temperatures, especially considering we're after 10 o'clock at night. We have Marion at 51 along with Mount Vernon, Paducah at 54 and Cape Girardeau coming in at 49 degrees tonight. We will see temperatures hovering in the low 50s until early tomorrow morning. Thanks to the clouds and the southerly winds, the rain will hold off until tomorrow. But by tomorrow, the chance for rain comes back and it only ramps up by the end of the week. I'll break down all the details and how it could impact your New Year's plans coming up in just a few minutes. All right, thank you, JC. The death toll is going up from the winter weather in New York. There alone, 37 people have died. And tonight, police in Buffalo say there's more crime happening too. Gloria Pasmino has the latest. This video from inside a car buried in bone chilling whiteout conditions on Christmas Eve. It's the last time the family of a woman who recently moved to Buffalo, New York ever heard from her. 22 year old Andel Taylor was found dead over the holiday weekend after she was trapped in her car by the historic and deadly blizzard that crippled Western New York. The loss of life during this winter storm is a very, very painful thing. We are fearful that there are individuals who may have perished living alone or two people who are not doing well in, a, in an establishment, especially those that still don't have power. Buffalo police say they are still sifting through 911 calls and welfare checks dating back to the earlier days of the deadly storm. We're still going through door to door of those check the welfares, checking homes uh, and, and trying to get that mission accomplished. On top of tragedy, police are now warning of a crackdown on what they described as business break-ins related to the storm. People have absolutely outright destroyed some of the stores and the markets that that community, those particular communities depend on on a daily basis. With some arrests already made. We have already got tips on who you are. Expect a knock on your door. We are coming for you. We will make arrests. I'm Gloria Pasmino reporting. And right after Christmas and all that winter weather, Southwest canceled another 2,500 flights today. That means since Thursday, they've canceled 15,000. We have video from St. Louis Lambert International Airport. This is from today, and those are unclaimed bags. Southwest canceled more than half of its flights in and out of Lambert. Southwest says it's because of the weather, but also because their systems are outdated. Their CEO had this to say yesterday. We're doing everything we can to return to a normal operation. And please also hear that I'm truly sorry. Southwest has already canceled more than 2,300 flights for tomorrow, and they say this could go on for days. Experts say, though, you are not completely out of luck if you already paid for your ticket. Check to see if you have travel protection because you could get your money back. Keep those receipts. Southwest says they'll honor reasonable re uh, requests for reimbursement. So what can you do if your flight is canceled? Here are some tips. Number one, don't wait on Southwest. Experts say you should book with another airline. Two, try calling an international customer service line. The wait times for those are usually shorter than the domestic wait times. And number three, remember your rights. You are entitled to get rebooked on a flight for no additional cost, even if it is a few days later. 
This is new at 10 tonight. Missouri police say you have to be careful on the roads in winter weather. We have video of a crash. The Cape Girardeau County Sheriff's Office posted the picture of a deputy squad car. They say this happened Monday. They say the deputy was on icy roads trying to help someone in a crash in this truck rather, and that's when this crash happened. The Sheriff's Office says you should stay home in severe weather and always move over and slow down for emergency vehicles. And thankfully, no one was hurt when this semi flipped over on I-57. This happened up near Mount Vernon tonight. Police say it hit a guardrail and that's when it flipped. It took crews six hours to clean it up. But again, thankfully, no one hurt in that incident. Unfortunately, two people were hurt in another crash today on I-57. This one happened near Franklin County. Illinois State Police say a car went across the median and hit another car. Two people were taken to the hospital and the southbound lanes of I-57 were closed for a while. They are open tonight. And believe it or not, 2023 is just around the corner and police say, folks, you got to be careful this weekend. A lot of us will spend time with our family and friends this new year. Police say if you plan on drinking, you have to designate a driver. They will be out in force this weekend for their drive sober or get pulled over campaign. And a local sheriff has this tip if you go out this weekend. Have a good time, but be responsible and not only for yourself, but be mindful of your friends and acquaintances that you are celebrating with uh, just in case they're not using uh, the same kind of good judgment and be on the lookout for them to help them to prevent any potential uh, catastrophes that might happen. If you do go out and can't drive home, Sheriff Bullard says that you can call dispatch. They can usually help you find a safe ride home. And this is new in our crime watch tonight. Paducah police arrested a man who shot a gun out of a stolen car. His name is Dwayne Gammons. Police say he was actually riding in a car with a woman who was arrested earlier this month. That happened December 4th. Police say Gammons is in jail and faces charges of wanton endangerment. Illinois minimum wage will go up next year. That means starting January 1st, it'll be 13 bucks an hour. If you get tips, your minimum wage will go up to 780 an hour. But if you don't earn up to $13 an hour with those tips, your employer has to make up the difference. Workers who are younger than 18 who work less than 650 hours a year will get a minimum wage of 1050 an hour. There have been five increases in Illinois minimum wage since 2019 because the goal is to raise it to $15 an hour by 2025. There's another act going into effect next year, and it's going to make your license plate renewal fees cheaper. That means for some folks, it'll only be $10. That is for older adults and people with disabilities. To qualify for the cheaper rates, you have to be at least 65 or 16 and disabled. There is also a price income cap. For more information and to find out if the act applies to you, you can check out our website, WSILTV.com. Tonight, the Department of Homeland Security says there were threats against immigrants at the border. It's about Title 42. That's the policy that lets border agents turn immigrants away because of COVID concerns. Well, the Biden administration was planning on getting rid of it, but now DHS says some people were planning on shooting immigrants, planting landmines along migration routes, and then luring them into trailers to poison them with gas. With those threats, the U.S. Supreme Court decided to keep Title 42 in place. They say they will look at it again in February. Pardon me. Did you buy a Mega Millions ticket last night? Well, you might want to buy another one because no one claimed last night's prize. That means you could take home, oh, take home almost $640 million. The lottery says this is the biggest Mega Millions prize in the last week of the year ever, and it's only been more than $600 million five times. So go get those tickets. The next drawing is Friday, and we'll have those numbers for you right here on News 3. An entertainment staple in Benton will have to temporarily close. Pearson's skating rink says they had a major water break. Their owner says they were looking at security cameras on Sunday and something didn't look right. So they went over there and they say they found two inches of water. It was across the wooden skating rink and the concessions area. And take a look, you saw that floor bowing and they say it's bubbling too. They say a pipe burst in the women's bathroom. The owners say they're still trying to wrap their minds around everything.
We have both been crying, trying to figure out what's going to happen next. Um, we still think it's a dream until we pull the pictures back up on our phone, and it's like, no, it's not a dream. Um, but we're, we're trying to keep our spirits up. We're praying every day. That's all we can do. Pearson says they'll likely have to replace the entire floor. Thankfully, they do have insurance. They're just not sure how long it's going to take. Pearson Skating Rink has canceled all of their skating and parties through March. They do hope to have it open again as soon as possible. It is almost New Year's and Walker's Bluff has a glow paint party a little early. They're celebrating tomorrow night from 630 to 9. They'll have live music and drinks in their black light wine cave. Tickets include a $5 voucher for food and drinks, paint materials, a canvas you get to take home. It is 21 and older. They do have more information on their Facebook page. And a family musical is coming to the Carson Center in Paducah. Winnie the Pooh the Musical opens Thursday, January 12th at 5 in the evening. It does have all of the classic characters and you can buy your tickets now. Just head to my.thecarsoncenter.org. Folks, it's warming up, thankfully, and it's going to get even warmer. J.C. Brian's full forecast is in just a few minutes on News 3 at 10.
If you're trying to lose weight for a New Year's resolution, a local gym wants to help and they want to help you stay local. News 3's Paul Wilcoxon explains. Support local, you're supporting your actual neighbors. It's that time of the year again. It's when many of us take a look at ourselves in a mirror and make a New Year's resolution by saying, I need to go to the gym more. Everyone wants to look good, but if you can feel good and you can perform in your day-to-day -day life well, that confidence just goes to every other part of your life. Cassie Karcher is one of those gym owners who hopes to see more business come through the doors thanks to those New Year's resolutions. It's a whole lot more than just working out. It's about finding a, a community that will support you as you try to reach your goals. But things like inflation, COVID, and the rising cost of goods have all played a role in the struggles to keep the doors open at FemFit 618 in Mount Vernon. It can be very frustrating. Karcher says one issue is trying to get customers back through the door. Before COVID, she says her membership was more than 300. Today, it's less than half that. One of her loyal members is Sheena Marlowe. She's been a FemFit 618 member for nearly four years and says there's more to being a member of a local gym than just working out. Your local gyms uh, put a lot out there into the community. Your local gyms are more likely to put on some sort of benefit to raise money to help with that situation. Karcher also knows how tough it is to lose weight and get into shape. After losing 100 pounds in 2012, she hopes her story can be an inspiration to others. And I had been overweight my whole life and just decided I was kind of tired of feeling that way. Reporting in Mount Vernon, Paul Wilcoxon, News 3. It turned out to be a pretty nice day. We did get to see a lot of sunshine and, of course, the warmer temperatures. Temperatures are still really warm this evening. We're still running in the 40s. This is a look at uh, Poplar Bluff coming in at 46 degrees, a little bit of a light breeze still out of the south. That's not going to be going anywhere anytime soon, but hey, it did bring us the warmer temperatures. A lot of us are still holding on to the low to mid 50s, even still this evening. Mount Vernon coming in at 51 uh, along with Marion Paducah at 54 along with Union City. Can it a bit cooler at 45 and Poplar Bluff at 46 degrees. So again, tonight we're going to be tracking warm weather an increase in some of the cloud cover, but aside from that, It'll be a quiet night. The chance for rain starts to work its way back in by Thursday. A few isolated showers by no means. Is it a washout? You should still be able to get out and about just fine. Now by Friday, that changes. We will start to see the rain chances picking back up. Chance for a few rumbles of thunder and then some pockets of heavy rain as well. So we'll have to keep an eye on that, especially if you have plans to be out. But uh, again, right now, just not a whole lot going on. Enjoy the breaks in the active weather when we get them. What we're going to see tonight is the increase in clouds. There are those light showers that start to move in by early Thursday. Again, not very widespread not very heavy. They're very spotty really throughout the entire day on Thursday. So just a little bit of a nuisance, I guess, if you're getting around, but the heavier rain doesn't come until Friday. So tomorrow, not a bad day. Temperatures will still be up into the 50s. We'll wake up to temperatures in the low 50s and running pretty close to 60 actually by the time we get into the afternoon. Just not as sunny and pretty as it was today. So Storm Track 3 app, you can of course track that rain right there on your phone. We see the heaviest rain with our next storm system that starts to build in from the south on Friday. It keeps the widespread rain around throughout the entire day. Friday, there is a chance that we hear a few rumbles of thunder, a little bit of lightning, but at this time we are not going to be tracking any severe weather with that event. We have several more chances for rain coming our way, though, especially as we get into early next week. This is a look at the next seven days when it comes to that rainfall potential. Widespread heavy rain across the region. We could have some localized flooding concerns with the extra rain on top of the snow melt that we'll already be dealing with. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. And then there's also a chance that we see some strong storms come Monday. So a lot of activity to talk about in this forecast. The plus side, it's going to be warm. We're back up uh, close to 60 tomorrow and then by Friday, 
We are still going to be in the mid 50s by Saturday, dipping down into the low 50s. But hey, it's not a negative 30 wind chill. And then we should start to dry out by Saturday evening. So if you're out for New Year's Eve, it doesn't look too bad New Year's Eve and into New Year's Day but we have all eyes on Monday. We really see those temperatures jump up and again that chance for storms will start to roll in as well. So for now, I mean, enjoy what the 50s. It's not bad, especially for end of December, starting a new year. It feels balmy. It does. <laughs> all right, thanks, JC. Well, people had to evacuate a 